Hey everybody, this is Teddy Lim. Welcome to day 23 of my 90 day video challenge. The other day, Business Insider wrote an article that was very inspirational to me. Uh, it was talking about some, what some of the most highly successful people were doing when they were age 25. And, you know, I just want to dive right into it because it's, it's really something else. I think you're going to get a great kick out of it. So let's begin. Number one, Jay-Z. When he was age 25, he was actually still um, hustling. He was already in the rap game, but he was relatively unknown, right? He was still selling records at the back of his trunk, um, but he didn't really hit his stride until age 30, right? Number two, Martha Stewart. For five years, she was actually a stockbroker. Um, she was, you know, buying and selling stocks, and before then, she was a fashion model, right? After she got married, she realized that being a stockbroker was taking too much toll on her and her family, so she decided to retire and become a full-time mom for about three years. Well, she really missed the hustle, so after about three years, she started her own cooking business. Number three, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook. When he was age 25, Facebook finally became profitable, right? So after years and years and years in college, while in college, working on this little startup, he finally broke the 300 million user barrier. And he was ecstatic, right, at age 25. Number four, Howard Schultz, CEO of Starbucks, was actually not in the coffee business yet. And you'll be surprised that he was actually a Xerox copying machine salesperson at age 25. It's funny as I've heard a lot of great stories about Xerox and their training programs. One of my biggest legends or biggest inspirations and mentors actually also started out uh, a Xerox salesperson uh, after coming back from the Vietnam War. You probably know who he is. He's the author of Rich Dad Poor Dad. Robert Kiyosaki, right? Number five, Tim Allen. You know him from home improvement fame. At age 25, he was actually arrested and he actually served two years in federal prison for smuggling cocaine. Can you believe it? <laughs> so by the time he was 26, 27, he already had a federal record. But you know, the most amazing thing about America, guys, is that America is the land of second chances. And uh, he eventually made an empire of, its, of himself from home improvement, getting all these endorsements from Home Depot and uh, Lowe's and all these other uh, home improvement places, right? So keep going. Number six, Richard Branson. At age 25, already started Virgin. And did you know that he actually got one of the highest positions in other one of his companies by intercepting mail? <laughs> you should read into that. That's a very interesting story. Number seven, Tina Fey, one of the hottest comedians in the world right now, in my opinion. She was actually doing childcare at the YMCA at age 25. J.K. Rowling, number eight. She got her idea for Harry Potter while she was riding a train. Uh, and it actually took seven years for it to finally materialize, for her to, to publish this story, right? Number nine, Ralph Lauren. I actually happen to love his, his, his shirts. Uh, and there, you know, he has one of the most durable clothing uh, that I've ever had. Um, and one of the most enduring brands uh, in American society as well. He was a sales assistant for none other than, you know, the 150 year old company, Brooks Brothers. So Brooks Brothers is a, is a suit and tie maker. And, you know, at age 25, he was selling suits for them. Number 10, Lloyd Blankenfield was an unhappy lawyer in New York. Number 11, Mark Cuban 
was a bartender in Dallas, and he got fired. He got fired for wanting to close a sale versus being a bartender because he had another part-time job, right? Uh, he got fired. So imagine age 25, you're in Dallas, and you're jobless. And he actually uh, was rooming with three other roommates in one room. So pretty amazing. You know, it gets gets hot out here in Texas. So, and last but not the least is Ariana Huffington. At age 25, she was actually tracking music festivals around the world for the BBC where she worked with her boyfriend. Uh, and as you know, she is the president or the owner of the, Huff the Huffington Post, which is, you know, a, a news slash blog company, blogging company, where they cover current events, science, etc., etc., right? So, you know, after reading this article on, the, on Business Insider, there's three takeaways that I got from it. Number one is that a majority of the most successful people in the world, millionaires and billionaires, didn't really hit their stride until their 40s. So, in my opinion, you know, your 20s, your 20s should be your formative years, right? Um, it should be the time where you delve heavily into self-development. It should be the time where you should be reprogramming some of your old beliefs, some of your old uh, mental structures, right? And undoing whatever your past training was. Number two is a majority of these most successful people didn't start out happy where they were at. And that's a good thing because, you know, contrast gives you the right perspective in order to know where, where you're trying to go. What your heart, deep down in your heart, is really trying to tell you. What is going to make your heart sing, in other words, right? So if you're in a place right now where you're unhappy, where coming to work or doing your work seems like a chore, or worse, feels like a, a, a jail cell, or you're in slavery right now, a lot of the most successful people in the world did not also started out that way. So, you know, be bold and feel confident that you are exactly where you have to be right now. Last but not the least is keep going, right? Majority of the most successful people in the world, I noticed, basically just kept on going. They just kept on going. They kept on looking for ways to improve their lives. They kept on on finding what it is that actually made them happy, right? And another exercise that they did was they actually asked themselves, where and when am I the happiest? What is it that I'm doing that where I feel the happiest, right? And that's probably a good thing to do right now is ask yourself, when are you the most happy? Because in that answer, you're going to find what it is that really inspires you to do your highest good and to do your highest work. So, I want to continue this conversation with you, my friends. Follow me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash global entrepreneur. Click on the link below and let's fight the forces of evil. Cheers.